Good morning once again and welcome to GMU Agenda here on UBC TV. I'm Robert Chirabo Nyonyitono and with me is Prince, that is Kimerera Henry Chimera, who is a plaintiff that is on the case uh, where they're versing Buganda Land Board and the Kabaka of Uganda. He's heading the majority of those of the beneficiaries in this estate where they took a case. It's been ongoing. It is developing, they have reached success and all that. But here in GMU Agenda, we are going to be looking at how far have they reached. Are they still, you know, he began this as one individual, joined by others, and now we are looking at how far have these issues gone. Of course, we know land is vital. And uh, over time, it has caused a lot of wrangles here and there. But of course, every piece of land in Uganda has a category where it falls. We know customary land, public land, and then land that comes under, mostly here in the central, where we know when you talk of the prince, you know what kind of land we are referring to. But good morning. Morning. I prefer calling a prince Omola Angira. So okay, good sir. morning and welcome to GMU Thank Agenda. You so much. Well, uh, mm. to begin with, this has been ongoing. Yes. It was in the courts and they have been uh, uh, pulling here and there. But one of the elements were the divisions among us two. Mm. Of course, the prince, uh, the prince, we have a prince, we have a princess there saying we are not part, we are not party. How far have you gone? Because your success entirely depends on your unity. Uh, actually, we started, actually I started myself by uh, really taking the administrators of Sadao Ritua to court uh, because we felt that actually they were not doing the job as it was meant to be done as administrators. And we seemed to be lacking a direction. So when I took them to court, I, you know, we eventually reached a stage where other members, beneficiaries of Sadao Ritua Estate uh, joined me in the struggle to really you know, get some justice uh, for the family of Sadao uh, And currently, I'd like to say that uh, we've come together and we're now uh, operating even with the administrators. So we've, we're, I would say, unity-wise, we've actually formed a, a good uh, unit at the moment. So we're a good team at the moment. We're now together. a good team yes. because, uh, in any case, now let's look at uh, how far have you gone? We last had when you had issues of uh, the Entebbe Ginger Highway, yes. where we had, uh, we can't go in the court details, yes. but at least people are optimistic. We need this highway constructed. Then somewhere we hear the prince and then the Chua family. Mm. He's an endurance. Uh, they're saying the compensation package. Where should it go? Why would we lose a government project mm. for? the managers for the beneficiaries of Chua property? I would say for myself, uh, for our side, we don't want uh, the government to stop the project or to lose the project. We want the, uh, the project to continue. Uh, the issue at hand is really about the ownership of this property where the uh, Jinja uh, Entebbe Express falls. So, you know, really for us, we want the, the, the project to continue. In fact, what we did is actually um, uh, receive a, a court order uh, stopping UNRWA actually paying uh, Buganda Land Board because what we felt is that it was better that it was dealt with in the court process in that the court would actually decide the ownership of the land. So in order for the expressway to continue, that, that money should be deposited within the court, uh, you know, within court uh, accounts and then when the the the, the actual uh, ownership was was decided the person will be paid so in for article 26 i believe the amendment because believe what so. you're proposing yes. is exactly that where there are grievances yes. or disagreements money be deposited in court yes. and a government project continues i think then uh, the rightful owner is found yes. they take the money i think it's the only reasonable recourse uh, because you can't expect uh, two uh, you know factions who are claiming the same uh, properties to to you know you know fight outside of the court or to have wrangles outside the court mm. and as you quite rightly stated it's actually 
uh, a government project which is going to affect a lot of people. Uh, so for us, we, we have no qualms or, or, or issues with government and all the people on the ground. In fact, what we said is that let them continue the compensation of the people on the ground and really they, they'll just deposit what is meant to be going for the, for the owners into the courts. So why, why not continue uh, you know, compensating the people who are on the ground mm -hmm. and let, the, let the, the, the actual project continue to fruition. The actual project continue. Yes. One of the things that is uh, a bit disturbing here is mm. you're one of the beneficiaries of yes. the Chua estate. Yes. And of course, this comes to leadership of Buganda Kingdom. Yes. But the Kabaka, he's one of the beneficiaries. Yes. And you go to court, actually, I think he should be like the head of all the beneficiaries here. Yes. Who in particular are you people taking to court? Actually, initially we took uh, actually Buganda Land Board to court as the, you know, I would say the people who are actually contesting our ownership. And in, in that respect, it's actually the Kabaka of Buganda who employs Buganda Land Board to manage uh, official estate property. But what we're saying is, is that uh, this particular property in, in relation to the, uh, the ginger uh, and Tebe Express is actually private property of Sir Daudi Chua estate, of which uh, Kabaka, uh, Kabaka of Buganda is the actual head. So, um, you know, just to explain it, maybe to, for your viewers to get a better understanding, uh, Sir Daudi Chua uh, was actually the residing Kabaka at the time of the British influence, if you will, who now formed the 190 agreement. And this property was, was part of his private estate. So as you can see, in subsequent uh, Kabakas who came, uh, it was still private property, but there was a, another arm where they had an official estate. So even uh, the Kabaka's uh, uh, father, Sir Edward Mutesa, also another, you know, uh, the, the succeeding head of, head of uh, the family after Sir Daudi Chua, was also, uh, you know, a beneficiary of this property. So if you will, it's, it's like, for example, uh, having a head of family, but he, he, as a head of family, he would actually oversee, you know, the, the, the giving of, of shares of the people who are the beneficiaries. So it's not really, you know, one is an institution and the other one is an actual uh, private family of which this property was formed part of that private estate. Mm. To the lay person, when we hear any case mm. regarding Buganda, yes. the first thing we look at is the person of the Kabaka. Yes. In this case, how can you differentiate the two? I, I wouldn't differentiate it because, like, if you imagine, it's the... To what extent this, this is the royal see because this is the royal family of Buganda, mm -hmm. uh, you understand, and the Kabaka of Buganda. Mm -hmm. So you ca it's, no, it's, it's not really uh, to differentiate or to, to take it apart. So if I uh, take the Kabaka of Buganda to yes, court, yes. am I taking the individual or the institution? If a person I'd, who works I'd in Mengo the institution. comes up and says, yes. uh, I work with Buganda Land Board, I work with Mengo, yes. I've taken you to court, is it the Kabaka? No, it's actually, I believe, the institution. Because if you, if you will, a, a member of uh, Buganda Land Board works, works on, on behalf of the institution, not the individual who is the private individual. Uh, uh, Kabaka of Buganda has a private also uh, family as well as an official p uh, position of the head of, as head of the family. Mm. So uh, you differentiate it between uh, the kingdom itself and the issue of the kingdom, uh, you know, for example, assets, and then privately, also the Kawaka had a private estate. So Daudi Chua had, had uh, 36 children. So if you, if you will, those 36 uh, uh, children became the beneficiaries of the private estate mm. of the Kawaka of Buganda. Private